Good evening. I'm called the Columbia County Board of Commissioners meeting to order on this January the 3rd, 2023. Please bow your heads with me. Gracious Father, we just once again thank you for the many, many blessings you bestow on, not on uh, Columbia County, not only on Columbia County, but the, just the whole Augusta region. Father, we're truly blessed to have great growth, and great citizens. Father, I do pray for the first responders, those who first ones out to protect life in this county, and especially those folks who go down range of the military to protect our freedoms. I pray now that you'd bless this meeting, help us to make wise decisions, ask all these things in your son's name. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which stands, one nation, for God, visible, liberty, and justice for all. Let the record show we have a full quorum of commissioners. Welcome again. Thank you. New commissioner. Uh, ready for your uh, opening speech? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, good. <laughs> commissioners, you have the minutes from the 20, December 20th meeting in your packet. If you've got a chance to review them, I'll accept a motion to do so. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Second. Any questions? On favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. On to the agenda, I believe one item that uh, is requested to be postponed, Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, for your consideration, we would request that we postpone item J1C1, which is resolution 2301 regarding the abandonment and surplus of John Deere Parkway uh, until the January 17, 2023 meeting. That item is still, or actually, I believe, finished legal review today, but we need a little more time on that. Consider it removed. Item G, we have the election of officers, and each year we elect a vice chairman. But anyone um, feel, feel like proposing a name? Mr. Chairman, I'd nominate Commissioner Gary Richardson for the office of vice chairman. Is there a second? second. Is there any, oh, does, we need, we need to have some serious discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Will you accept if nominated? Uh, we gladly. Well, well, we have a nomination and a second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Under special recognition, I believe we have some folks with youth leadership here. If you'll, um, wherever you are, if you'll stand up and tell us your name and what school you go to, what grade you're in. Welcome. We now have a presentation from Sonal Kapura on the Thrombosis Awareness Month proclamation. And We're putting her to work. Mr. First. Couch is going to lead that. County Board of Commissioners proclaim January 2023 Thrombosis Awareness Month and recognize the efforts of Global Thrombosis Forum in North America. You will just state your name for the record. Um, good evening to the Board of Commissioners of Columbia County, Ms. Renee and ladies and gentlemen. I am Ochitre, and with my colleague Sonal, we will be presenting about thrombosis. So what is thrombosis? Thrombosis is a condition that's better known as blood clots. Blood clots can block veins or arteries, which reduce blood supply to vital organs. This can lead to serious complications, such as stroke, heart attack, respiratory system damage, and even death. Uh, in this diagram, we can see the backside of a right leg of a person. These blue lines represent veins. In the first diagram, we can see a healthy vein, where the blood is all moving at a constant rate. 
In the second diagram, we can see the pooling of blood in pockets in the vein. This has significantly slowed down blood flow, and this can slow down blood to, to vital organs. In the third diagram, there has been an injury to the vein, and a blood clot has formed. And in the fourth diagram, we can see a rare case of part of that blood clot breaking off and becoming an embolus. This embolus can travel through the veins into the lungs and eventually cause a serious condition known as a pulmonary embolism. Now I'd like to give it to my colleague, Zonal. Thank you, Oj. Now I would like to talk about the incidence of thrombosis. Thrombosis affects as many as 900,000 people and takes more than 100,000 lives. Every minute, a blood clot is formed, and every six minutes, a person dies due to thrombosis. Thrombosis kills more people than breast cancer, HIV, and car crashes combined each year. I would also like to emphasize that blood clots can affect people of any race, gender, or age. There are many factors that can increase blood clot susceptibility, such as age, dehydration, poor diet, lack of physical activity, long periods of inactivity, such as taking a long flight, obesity, and oral contraceptives. As a member of the Global Thrombosis Forum, I have a message to Columbia County residents. It is the responsibility of every citizen of Columbia County to make sure that our citizens are well-trained and protected against thrombosis, a deadly killer. I would also like you all to be aware of blood clots, maintain a healthy lifestyle, and contact your doctor if you feel any pain in your legs or backs. We would also like to thank the Board of Commissioners. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Great well presentation. Thank you so much. Very good. Commissioners, you have the consent agenda in front of you. Mr. Chair. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Did I jump ahead already? I, I did. Sorry. Oh, I was fixing to make a motion to. Oh. Sorry. Where was I? Consent agenda. It's the, uh, the agenda is in front of you with the consent items have been through committee, received the necessary votes to be placed on the committee. So if they still meet with your approval, we'll accept one motion to approve them all. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a uh, motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. Any questions? Any other motions you want to make? Not yet. All in favor, raise your right hand. That motion carries. On to the debate agenda. No, actually, now that we have the um, board appointments. Commissioner Malier. Yes, I make a motion to approve the reappointments and appointments as listed on the recommendation sheet to the appropriate boards and committees. Second. Questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. They are appointed. On to the debate agenda. Commissioner Malier, you're going to take the I'm first take one. I'm going to take that one. Um, I make a motion to approve the request for a master sign plan for property located at tax map 072A parcel 368, subject to the conditions enumerated in the December 15th Planning Commission report. A second. We have an instance where the uh, owner of the building is looking to put additional signage on his building. The building uh, cannot have additional signage without having a master sign plan, so the master sign plan has been applied for. Uh, currently, they could put additional signage, as you see, on, um, on the side of the building and the rear of the building. However, they're looking to put all that signage on the front of the building. So what they're asking for is permission to add, go back, go back, Patrice. Uh, this sign here and this sign here is, is what is currently not allowed by code. With the master sign plan, however, we're moving the signs from the rear of the building and the side of the building and allow them to go to the front of the building. There's already signs located here and here for, um, for the tenants 
and you will have a, a sign here for the actual address of the building. So it's not additional square footage, it's just moving them it's around. It's basically relocating all the signed square footage to one side of the building. If there were multiple tenants, different floors, where would that sign? So that's this with this master plan. They would if they wanted to change the sign. They have to come all the way back through this process again. So um, they do have a sign, a monument sign out on the road that has blank spaces for additional tenants, as you can see here. They do have space there, but um, with this master sign plan, if approved, they would have to come back if they want to change anything additional. Any other questions? There's a motion second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. You abstain. Four yes, one abstention. On to you, Commissioner Skinner. Yes, sir. Uh, item uh, B2. I make a motion to approve the request for a major revision to the current PUD for property located at tax map 082J, parcel 016, subject to the conditions enumerated in the December 15th, 2022 Planning Commission report. Second. Ms. Jennifer Lowers. If it will, please just state your name and address for the record and please keep your comments to five minutes. Thank you. 506. Um, in relation to the property, the traffic runs in front of my property and the creek is back. So I have flow of water and flow of traffic and that's why I'm impacted directly by the creek. Um, what I'm here for you tonight is to ask you to, as it is in place, I understand that the has a plan right now to break ground on a property that you're looking at. Um, I know that when that breaks ground, whether it's this property or that property, that you all are going to take a lot of heat and answer a lot of questions. That's necessarily fair to you guys because you are that as a whole, right? Your dynamic is changing. And um, it's not the same commission now. And we're not the same automatically that approval went through. So I'm asking you to look at this in front of you, this is a second chance, and judge it based on its merit and what our needs are right now as a community. Right now, as a community, never our neighborhood out, yeah, it wasn't a some of the neighborhoods why they were there and there wasn't a lot of traffic. Now, because of the opening, We'll come through and cut through to go to West, um, West Lake, uh, from West Lake to back speeds and everywhere. In my place, my Oak Chase, I can't back out of my own driveway at certain times a day because all that traffic is concentrated at a certain time. That's what you might not see in your commission. So it's making a very dangerous situation. <coughs> Walkable neighborhood, walks, and now those two things are changing, and that's a problem. So when Mr. Um, Proposed this plan. One of our big concerns is around space parking. Parking, and you know, you're intended to only give me five minutes. But we know how that works out. We know that the intention is not for everybody to be reacting. It happens, and it's already happening, and we see it happening. That is going to increase that issue. <coughs> so we are asking you all to not approve this forward to take into consideration the scale and what you're doing right now as it stands when we are already struggling to fill commercial spaces dozing a perfectly good home in only an acre and replacing four commercial spaces feet from Reed Creek that's why I moved I didn't move for tax piece though I moved for Reed Creek and I know you've done Westlake and you've done a great job I know you took heat the difference with Westlake is they have they don't have that luxury we also don't have an on and off access point from that, so they're going to come through. So I'm asking you on that to remember that we didn't ask for Mr. Young, ask for it to be rezoned. He has a working plan that he can break ground on right now. I understand that it comes at an extra cost to him, but your staff did a wonderful job making him aware of those costs at the time when he chose this property. This property isn't suited for him. Not to put us on us as neighbors to continue to absorb the cost. It's already been cost and lost time 
to not just us as neighbors, but to TR Ready, to the other developers that may want to be moving forward, and that locks them out of this process too. It's not just about what's good for us as neighbors, us versus Lauren. It's about what's best for us as a community. And a healthy community, if he can't fill those spaces or he well fills those spaces and we as a neighborhood are too broken, too tired, too run down to go shopping because we've already been stuck in traffic all day and we don't have clean drinking water, it's not going to help. So we need to look at this property and say, what can this property support right now at the time in front of you? What are its needs are not an abundant resource? get worn down. It takes me five years to make you one and send it to you. Okay, so that's what I'm asking you to do. Our resources and what it costs our community if we push forward to the infrastructure. I'm not asking you to shut him down on what he does. I'm asking you to help it reach its full potential. And I think after meeting with staff and all of my neighbors and all of my and better than what was put in front of you. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, is Danielle Farr? State your name and address for the record, please. Large storm. Zachary.
all this by Absolutely. Matt, so is the, does the um, driveway, is it going to impede, uh, I'm sorry, the median, is it in the way of the driveway? So it's currently shown your concrete median planter is here. That, that's your actual curb and gutter median. The sign is located roughly here where your sign's at. This area here is all striping. Majority of this striping on the upper end is, is worn out. Half striping. Thank you. That's what he's going to explain to us. Thank you. So, so the median, as it's shown here, it does not impact the concrete median. If anything, you might have to do some restriping in this area to allow the full median. And I was just, actually, I just uh, I wrote some notes down just to try to keep up with some of the points. But so from a median perspective, I know I know where the sign is. I look, I see it every day. Um, it's, is it is it going to impede the median? Is the median going to have to be torn out? As it's shown here, no. I guess the point she's making, hard to draw real fine, there's a required 20-foot structural buffer. So mm -hmm. her point is that line should extend out. Assuming that's your point, I don't want to speak for you. Okay, so that's her point. But if you'll also look, the actual property line, the property line is roughly here. See that the, the radius is actually on county property, not on property owned by Mr. So he'll have to tweak some to make sure that 20 foot buffer goes all the way to the property line. But once they leave the property line, that buffer no, more, no longer exists. That's right away, it must be clear for, for line of sight. Can't have a buffer out in the right of way. Does that make sense? Can you help me Assuming that's the point you were you were making. I don't want to I don't want to speak for, but it, it's so and but in terms of wastewater, obviously there's not a retention pond on this site. So there's not a retention pond shown. Um, obviously he hasn't done a whole lot of design on this um, because he doesn't have permission to to build. I wouldn't have spent my money designing either. However, there's a note stating that underground retention will be provided during design. Um, anything that falls, you can curb and gutter line. That's your that's your basically your parking lot. So anything that falls in that's gonna be contained by that curb and gutter is gonna go into that that pond. Your building pad, which is here, should also go into that pond, impervious surface. Now, again, I don't have his design, he doesn't not put contours, but some of the impervious area may also drain into that pond. I, I don't know yet, I hadn't seen it, but by code, he cannot let water leave that site faster than it, after he's built than it did before he built. Volume, the, the velocities, that type of thing, so. 
Um, discharge point would be into an existing storm system. So this line here is an existing storm system. At some point he would tie into it, maybe a, a doghouse in this location. Uh, it's not shown on this map, but that line goes up, it crosses under, goes through the Zaxby's parking lot and dumps into Reed Creek on county property. There it flows under Erie's Ferry and over into Bowen Pond. So this, this stormwater here would not actually make it to <coughs> Reed Creek Park, the east of that where it discharges. Was there not a plan to have a, maybe I, I misread it, but, uh, but uh, just like what we have over in the. An underground retention system. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It says on his plan that if he goes into design with this plan, he would have to design that underground retention to hold that water and release it at the same rate it's released now. How many parking spots were added from the previous plan to this one? I think he has 26 now. I believe it was 17 before. Um, I'm something like 17 or 18 before and 26 now, I believe it is. So it is an increase in parking, and that's due to um, some additional square footage. The footprint is the same. However, he's going multi-story, so he's got additional square footage. Our calculations for parking are based off of square footage and the use. Depends on the use and the square footage to how many parking spaces are required. Draw a line showing the traffic patterns. If you come out right here, draw a line. And you want to turn left to go to Furious Ferry. You can still turn left, or you cannot because of the striping. Like draw, if you're if, going yeah. out of here and you want to turn left and get to yeah, Furious so Ferry, draw draw a line and show us how you get out. If this double yellow line, I'm gonna draw a double yellow line the best I can there. Our our legal guys over there might tell you better, but double yellow lines you're not supposed to cross. Right. So you would have to eradicate those double yellow lines to create the ability for that person to cross. This, the Concrete curb and gutter for the island does not have to be modified as shown here. Now, if he makes his driveway a, a foot narrower so that he can stay inside the buffer there or stay out of the buffer there, I still think he can make it work. But again, this is a conceptual layout, not true design. So this is not right in, right out where people have to go through the neighborhood when they leave. It's not, the way it's shown is not right in, right out. I mean, obviously we have to do some striping changes, but. If it was going to be right in, right out, we'd have some sort of pork chop island out here in the middle of it to force people to go right, right in, right out. We wouldn't give them that full-blown wide driveway if we expect them to go right out. Do you have a uh, the plan that's currently approved that we could show? That is not it. That's the that if you back up while we're here, if you'll back up, that was the plan that was proposed that was withdrawn that she mentioned um, in twenty two, I believe it was twenty one. Um, he was proposing putting the building in the back corner. However, as mentioned, there is an access easement through here to get to, to the property to the, the north here, um, playing east but um, north by the compass. Uh, therefore, we couldn't allow that building to sit there. So that's why he withdrew. He knew it was not going to get approved, so he withdrew that. That is what's approved. As you see, he basically shoved the building to this corner over here then flopped his parking over here to this side. And it does save him some, some uh, work. We have an existing water line that runs roughly here. As you see here, you have to relocate that water line around his building. Uh, by shifting the building over, not required to relocate our water line. Property above. Property it shows a right in. Has that been approved? On, on this property here? Yeah. I'm not aware of approval being done. However, with its length and its distance from the um, distance from the stop signal, I believe the DOT would give him a right in, right out. There's a median already out there, so he wouldn't have a full access right in, right out. Probably get two of those: one at the top, one at the bottom of the property. I can't speak for DOT. We go straight out to Fierce Ferry, sir. Out to Fierce Ferry, yes, sir. Not going back through the right of way. But again, it. He has you rights to, to that, that property. Nothing. You'd, you'd have to exit through the traffic light. You'd never get out. If you want to make a left, you have to get it. But we obviously want to make interconnectivity amongst parcels along that road the best we can. We don't want to have driveways every 100 feet. So interconnectivity right. for commercial is a good thing for the traveling public along Furious Ferry Road. Matt, as far as the four conditions that were sent over from planning and zoning, we talked about the buffers and landscaping, which is more than it was before. Um, second was the photometric plan, talking about the lights. Correct. 
and also the light shall be shielded and directed away from residential properties. Can you show me where the lights would be? I can't. I have not seen their light plan, but I mean, if it was me designing it, I'd, I'd want to put my lights along this side and shine them this way to light my parking lot. Obviously, you'll have to have lights out here but uh, to light this, but I'm no lighting engineer. I don't want to speak on behalf of they hire to do that. So it couldn't be something on top of the building shining back towards the Correct. buffer, towards and the there's even there's even some, uh, I believe, wording about the signs on the exterior of the building. They're not internally lit signs, so you won't see a glowing sign. You will see a, a wall sign that is lit where the light's shining onto the wall that has to cut off at 11 o'clock at night to, again, eliminate some of that light pollution. Any other questions, comments? We have a, a motion and second on the floor. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. Chair, item uh, RZ221209. I make a motion to approve the request for a conditional use for a gym, property located at tax map 078B, parcel 137C, subject to the conditions enumerated in the December 15th, 2022 Planning Commission report. Second. Chair, we back one sheet. This is a conditional use for a gym in these, this area here, highlighted in blue, is, is for that one suite in this development. Uh, again, using a gym, or the use of a gym in this zoning is a conditional use which requires commission approval. One of the co uh, conditions on here is about public parking. Uh, they had originally showed some parking in the rear, however our fire marshal had some concerns about keeping that free for fire apparatus to, to make their movement around the building. So one of the conditions is they have to give us a plan showing the striping of the, par of the public parking space they're going to be using if this is to move forward. Questions? Do we have a motion and second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. <coughs> legal matters. No legal matters. No request for review by committee. We have a couple of people that have requested to speak. Mr. Chris Price. Who else, sir, just state your name and address of the record. My name is Chris Price. Um, I'm at 323 Greendale Place here in Evans. Um, so recently, you know, this uh, this board has come to the conclusion that they revoke stay social, tap and tables, liquor license, dragging all that. A lot of us know the whole situation and everything. So I came here to, to get some clarification on some of the rules and laws here of the county. Um, I guess just for my own sake. Because I was, you know, I was a patron of them. They were a patron of me as a business, back and forth. So, you know, here, Com Commissioner Richardson said previously on record, we can't choose what laws we do and don't obey. We have to apply all the rules evenly across everywhere, right? So, it's, so, you know, we all know Backyard Tavern has recently also closed. They actually forfeited their liquor license. But... Their license was suspended, and it was suspended after, come to find out that after 11 years of operation, they had no kitchen, which is the exact same violation that Stay was under, which is the definition of an eating establishment, right? So that definition says that you have to have a sink, you have to have a hood, all this sort of stuff. Commercial kitchen, right? Yes. Right. Um, and it was under that as well, that same thing that it said, 50% total annual gross sales from prepared food, not exceed alcohol, right? Which is, again, the same thing, uh, or the same definition. However, their, their license was suspended. They were also giving away beer during their trivia nights, um, which is also a violation of the ordinances 692A1, which says you can't give away any alcohol. Um, Ironwood Tavern, up until just recently, had a sign on their window that said that their kitchen closes an hour before the bar does, which actually is also under the same definition of an eating establishment, um, which says, full service kitchen offering food service every hour such establishment is open. But 
and I think somebody came to them recently, some code enforcement or something, but they were only told to just take the sign down instead of... They were? From what I've heard. I, I don't know that anything has been done at all, really. I haven't been up there. I haven't really talked to anybody. It's just what I heard here is that it's been addressed, but... Let's not go on hearsay. Continue with the sure. items that you know for a fact. Um, lastly, Sugar and Spice Cocktail Mixers, LLC, here in Evans, um, doesn't even sell food. Um, and they also have specials where they have bottomless mimosas, which is also a violation of the ordinances 692A3, which says that you can't furnish anybody an unlimited number of alcoholic beverages, which is what bottomless is. Um, <clears throat> So I guess my question, and the clarification that I came here for, was if some businesses don't have any action taken on them, and some have them revoked, and some have them suspended, what is, where is the criteria of suspension versus revocation? Because that criteria doesn't seem to exist in the code of ordinances. Chris, you want to take a stab at that? Sure. So each situation is different. Uh, I think there are, the board has a discretion in any given uh, you know, set of circumstances. I can tell you that, at least since I've been county attorney, that when they're presented with information, such as you've presented, they investigate and they take action. Uh, that action is going to be dependent on uh, the set of circumstances and, and the board that sits in front of uh, that applicant or that uh, license holder. So. I don't know about the last one. I do. I do believe they took advantage or uh, took action on Riverwood restaurant. Riverwood or the Ironwood. Ironwood. Ironwood yeah. Okay. And what action was taken? I don't. I'm oh. not sure. Oh, okay. So, you know, I looked up today as well some previous occurrences of liquor licenses getting revoked in the state of Georgia, and almost all of them come up under they violent crimes were attracted to that location. They were also doing other things, like they had a hair salon in there, or they were selling to minors, or whatever, or even have multiple violations uh, to have their liquor licenses revoked. So, again, my, my other question, my main question here is, for what reason exactly was Stay's license revoked versus suspended? Again, that's that's a discretionary action of the board. Um, they had the right. All I know is, is legally, they had the right to make the action that they had. We had it litigated. It was approved by the uh, judge. Um, so as far as going into the reasons behind it, they don't they don't have to give the reasons. Their le reasons have to be legitimate enough for the judge to approve the actions which he did. And is there any kind of um, plan to add any criteria in the code of ordinances as to whether a license will be suspended or revoked? You have to restate that. I'm so right now, the code of ordinances doesn't state the criteria for which a license should be suspended versus being revoked. So will that verbiage Actually, get added? There is added? criteria. It's at fifty percent alcohol. 50% food. He's asking, what's no. the, how do we know what the punishment's going to be? And, and it's, it's, it's a little bit of a gray area, and it gives the body that's making that decision the, the latitude to decide where on that spectrum. Yeah, I mean, it's based on circumstances. So, you know, every, again, like I said, every situation is different. In this situation, they were given public funds to run their business. That's one thing that's different. Um, they had to produce their uh, financials uh, based on a promissory note that had the development authority. That's, you know, again, every situation is different, um, and they have discretion whether or not to revoke or suspend, and that's within the board's discretion. All right. That's all I have. Thanks. Amanda Watts. And if you'd state your name and address the record, please. Amanda Watts. I reside at 4014 Fairfax Street, Martinez, Columbia County. Um, my first question is, when an uh, email is sent to the commissioners, what is the turnaround time um, to expect a response when a question is asked? 
depends on who you ask it to and what uh, did you ask and ask. Bonnie Skinner. It was emailed to y'all December 22nd. So I'm asking what is the appropriate turnaround time to expect a response from y'all on a general depends on the it subject three and days? How long? The, the, the legal answer yes. is the legal answer is asking a question, there is no requirement for the commission to respond. They can and often do, <laughs> depends on the situation. If you're asking for a document that's a it's part of a uh, I, I, excuse me, I was asking for a full, uh, an investigation into food sales numbers in other uh, establishments, food establishments in the county. So, so to the extent that there's any documents that would be applicable to your request uh, that aren't protected, then those would be produced. Uh, okay. if, if there are Turn no... time if, of what? If there are no responses and within, well, it's within three days we have to oh. respond, but... If it, it takes longer to gather them, then we have to give a response within those three days saying that we're working on it. Okay, so we're at day 11, and of course there was holidays in there, so I should expect some sort of, hey, we got, got it. <clears throat> Would you agree, Ms. Connie? I, I've got it, we're working on it, be right with you. It is, yes, and yeah. Uh, I did not uh, write A, B, C, D, or E. So the request, to, I mean, I don't know. We, I haven't. Okay, well, if I about, can, I have it here. And so basically, I was asking for requesting a full investigation. I mean, we're curious. I am curious. Your citizens of the county are curious. We don't know what other food sales are. We only know what Backyard Tavern was or was not. And we know what Stay's Social Tap and Tables was in 2020 during a global pandemic at 47.7. Were you asking for documents? I was asking to for you. So if you're asking for an investigation, that's asking for an action, which they oh. do or do not, you know, they don't have to respond to that. They don't, it's within their discretion. But if you're asking for documents, they legally have to give you responsive documents. There's a, there's. So I need to reword it to, I would like to request documents of food sales. Yes. All right, got you. All right. So I should expect zero response from this one. Again, it's Guys. within their discretion whether or not to Mr. respond. Skinner, but, uh, are you going to respond to me? Yeah, I don't have a response to you. You don't or you do? About about the uh, food sales organization. I'm sorry, you do or you you won't? You no, do not. I do not have a comment. Okay, we but if I haven't done an audit, ma'am. So on who? Require, I guess you want, you're asking for an audit of a particular establishment. Yeah, just, yeah. I wasn't curious to know what everybody else is doing. You, you know, you were very, we needed to know what Stay Social Tap and Table was. So I'm curious to know what everybody else is doing. Um, my email also included, similar to Mr. Price's here, um, I'm interested into knowing why it is allowed for Sweet Tin to give away free drinks, which by the way, ladies, Tonight at 7, if you wear your cowgirl boots or your hat, you get a free drink first tonight. So that is... You know how we find out some of them? What? Of folks telling us. Oh, okay. But... We we're going to have to figure out who sugar and spice is. Yeah. Okay. So, we, so sometimes... Oh, about this one. And that is against the ordinance per Mr. Price, what he just read to you. Um, also, Mellow Mushrooms doing bottomless mimosas. That's against the ordinance. And, of course... This sign's taken down at Ironwood Tavern suddenly, but no repercussions. There's no, it's against the ordinance. It's against what they signed for an alcohol license, but nothing's, like, nothing was done about it. They were against the ordinance. They are against the ordinance. These guys are against the ordinance, but you choose not to do anything. That concerns me, that you are not. Scott, you want to address the subject? Applying we have discussed laws equally we have discussed how the ordinance is written and and how we will conduct audits there's been and I was on record saying this before and I'll say it again there has been no um, procedure laid out in the ordinance as to how we do audits of food and alcohol sales that's never been done before uh, so stay social tap and tables audit was never done so no again uh, theirs was different they, there's uh, is different they they, self-reported they self-reported because they were they were the recipient of government funds and they had an obligation to the development authority to make a report. 
They made a report. When they made the report, it got brought to the attention of the Board of Commissioners that they were in violation. Because you asked for Robbie Bennett. It didn't go after them. When nobody went after stay, the development authority had had an obligation to get that information from stay. She provided the op information, and the information that she provided showed that she was in violation of the ordinance. In what year? In 20 and 21 and 22. But those and, were not financial. And listen, I'm, I'm not going to get into a debate with I'm, you. I want to know what no, the, see, he, the he, community does, too. You, if you do the open records request, then you can get all the information. I have that is seen the open records request results, actually. You have? Yes. Okay, um, so, but so I would you also have more like information than, than you're saying The difference saying have. between these establishments here and Stay Social Tap and Table, since the doors were open in August 14th, 2020, Stay has been uh, a welcome to all in the community from day one. Didn't matter who you were or what you look like. It was an open door for everybody in this county that you speak for. To include she, uh, Renee, the owner of Stay, and her team have been with other members of the community, have um, supported, shared profits and fundraising for male suicide prevention. We've done breast cancer awareness. Uh, profits went to that. We've catered and hosted uh, leukemia and lymphoma society events, pet adoptions. Uh, there's a new program in Columbia County schools called Resilient Teens. Uh, Self-harm and suicide in Columbia County went up 200%. We hosted an event for that, fundraised, and shared profits with that organization right here in Columbia County. That's the difference between us and those other establishments. We also supported Gay Pride Month and had a drag show. I'm wondering if that is the difference between us and them and why the revocation of the license was taking place. So I'm curious, is that the reason? Is that the reason you absolutely guys Absolutely not. It, absolutely first, not. Notice we had of okay. this was June-ish and we waited and, and didn't take action until when? October? To get, get the numbers right. Make sure your numbers are right. So absolutely not. Actually, when I speaking for myself, when I saw that they, they had the the drag show, my first thought was, okay, this is going to turn into a drag show thing, not what it's all about, which is you had to be fifty fifty. But back to the point in hand, it was a we have an ordinance, barred the money, it was self reported, and did we didn't have an audit function because we didn't check people. She gave us the information. We're required to act. And I'm actually Robbie the, I'm Bennett. Actually, I'm we actually had a meeting with him July 27th. I'm actually the one who said she didn't give it to you guys. Which ones we, uh, which we, we enforce and don't enforce. Since then, mm -hmm. we're going forward with and working on it now. Every restaurant in Columbia County will now be reporting. They'll be said that all were required to be self-reported. Okay. So yeah. So, so you are making changes. Absolutely. To the that is the answer to what Chris asked. Okay. It's in process. It'll be in place this year. Actually, maybe you can tell me, Scott, a better time. But at any rate, so you, moving forward with that. Before we didn't audit folks. She gave no, us the no. information. We were required to act. So the drag show had nothing to do with each of your decisions that voted to revoke the license. Absolutely not. Man, when the drag show stuff was going on, there were folks inundating us with hate mail. Why are you letting this happen? That's illegal. You can't. And I think you'd be surprised to know that every person up here with us mm -hmm. would reply, as hard as it was, whether you like drag shows or not, you say, you know what? Nobody's naked. Nobody's touching small children. Nobody's doing anything illegal. We couldn't stop it if we wanted to. We defended her in a lot of ways. Now, we didn't go put up a sign saying, yay, drag shows, but we stood there and, and put people Blame in the, the eye and explain right. that it's not I, illegal. I have seen the results for the open thing. records request. I have seen them. I've seen about a handful, a minority of people say no drag show, no drag show. But no, nobody's going to anyway. know to email you, oh, yay, drag show. But when the possibility of a suspension or revocation for stay where they love the, you know, the establishment that they go to, their families go to, they bring their families out of town go to, when they realize that was in jeopardy, the majority of people in the opens record request results were for stay to keep it. So you, the three that voted against it that are here today did not go with the majority of the people of Columbia County once it was in jeopardy. You're suggesting that we targeted that business because- I am very much suggesting it, and that is what is 
That is what the people that you represent believe, except um, for the few, um, the minority. And it is very, there's not that, compared to what you're getting and what you've received for to keep stay and what kind of establishment it really is outside of June 2022, the majority is was for to keep stay in business. Thank and I think you. you guys missed out on an opportunity, clearly. Because, you know, we... The good things were happening there. We just supported a group for one month, and now we can't do anything for anybody else. Thank you, so, Amanda. Thank you. All right. I don't believe we have an executive session. Only one more motion needs to be made. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. We're adjourned. <laughs>